extremely disappointed at David Omai. Um, those are the kinds of statements I don't expect to hear from a senior government official. And, you know, he's a man I, I tend to respect, you know, because he's, he's a hardworking individual. And, you know, he, he knows his onions when he comes um, to engineering and, and Ministry of Works and Roads Constructions and things like that. So I have a lot of respect for him. Uh, but particularly, I was, I, I felt offended by that statement because I've said it on this program severally. I detest the dog whistling of an entire ethnic group in Nigeria. And let's call a spade what it is. It's becoming one too many that we want to consistently and continuously scapegoat the Igbo ethnic tribe in Nigeria and it's unacceptable. It is unacceptable because there is a history of violence targeted at that group since 1953 in our country. Welcome once more great people of Biafra. Welcome once more the people who love things that are good. The people who are lovers of justice, fairness, equity and truth. Now, this man you are hearing is a northerner. We are going to continue his broadcast. He is a northerner speaking facts about the truth and the ill treatment against the people of Biafra. But there's, uh, there, there, you know, there are striking points that he made. And we are going to look into those points now. Very soon we are going to look into those points. But my question here is, he is not just speaking to... Um, the northerners per se he is speaking both to the northerners and the southerners especially the eastern politicians the eastern politicians because they tend not to understand the plight of the people of biafra the people of the old eastern region they tend not to understand what these people are passing through the evil method on these people they tend not to understand they always you know uh, uh, feign a deaf ear to the cries and aspirations of the people of the old eastern region now look at p2b when we continue to tell him that these people who are just using you they are using you they are using you against your own brother stop whatever you are doing he didn't agree today he is now seeing a passenger who stood for him a passenger who was supporting him he is now seeing a passenger attending functions wearing the jagaban cap he is now seeing at uh, obasanjo taking pictures recent pictures with the wife of tinubu he is now seeing obasanjo aligning with tinubu after they must have used him and tomorrow again he will still have he will still feign deaf ear to the cries and aspirations of the people of Biafra to go and you know try his luck again in the elections after you must have seen clearly and you know that you know by voting you cannot even gain that position by voting Sometimes I begin to ask myself, are these people who claim to be Biafrans, who claim to be, you know, of the Igbo descent, are they really sensible enough? These people who are politicians, or they just want to be stooges and receive the crumbs that fall off the table? Are they really, are they really sensible and mature in mind? Are they really confident enough to speak like the true Biafrans, not mixed bloods? Are they really the people who think they are? Now let us listen to this northerner. He is going to explain to you from a issue what happened and why is it that the Biafrans are being targeted in everything. You know, some people will come out and say, why is it that you are the only one complaining? Every time you are complaining, this ethnic group does not like you, these people does not like you. But the reality of the thing is that it, it didn't start today. It didn't start today. And the Biafrans are not the cause of the problem. But why is it that everything is always targeted at them? Now, let's listen to this man. Listen, Caesar, a meeting was held in Lagos, or not necessarily a meeting, in, in Parliament. And Tony and Nahuru moved a motion uh, for the independence of Nigeria. The North opposed that motion. And at the train station, when they were going back yeah. to their constituency, yeah. um, they met a crowd that was essentially mocking them. They got back to the North. Chief Akintola led a, a tour across the north, you know, to campaign essentially for the independence, to rally the north in support of, of Nigerian in, independence. Guess what happened after that? Riots broke out in northern parts of Nigeria, particularly in Kano, where over 240 Igbos were massacred. Were they the ones that demanded for Nigeria to have an independence at that time? Now, this is his first point. 
he made it clear that there was a meeting in Lagos about the independence of Nigeria. And after the meeting, the North disagreed. But then Chief Akintola um, now had to, you know, rally round the North and, you know, preaching about independence to the people of the North so that they come to terms with what um, the general uh, uh, area or the South is, um, you know, seeking for. And after that, what happens? There was serious spying and massacre of Igbos. Are the Igbos the ones who demanded for that? Are the Igbos the ones who, you know, came to the north to rally round for the support of the northern youths? So you begin to wonder, what is the problem? Why is it that each time these people do not like the Igbos, these people are always, you know, um, putting Igbos in a position where they become the scapegoat at all times. Let's continue to listen to him. In 1966, particularly in May, yeah. months before the Civil War happened, thousands of them were massacred across northern cities and they had to flee to the east for safety because thousands of them were indiscriminately killed for what they knew nothing about right so let's not even talk about the civil war and the hundreds of thousands that were massacred and the fact that after 1970 this entire ethnic group had to start from the scratch again to begin to build their lives and she's a look at what they have done since 1970 a group that left or started from nothing went to Bauchi, went to Kano, went to Meduguri, went to Akure went to Ogun State and look what they have built in 40 years of hard work, grit and no support from the federal government. Look what they have done for themselves. But what we consistently and continuously do is to, is, is to signal hate, hatred and violence. And this thing has to stop. We can't continue a country. Listen, if you don't want a group of people to be a part, let them go then. I, I don't understand this. Every turn, there has to be an excuse to single out an ethnic group. I give you a typical example, just like the past elections. I heard people telling, um, how can how can the, the uh, OB, for instance, have scored ninety eight percent in certain states in the north? How can he have scored ninety percent? Muhammad Buhari, under a PDP led federal government, scored over ninety percent votes in four northern states. Go and check the results in Katina. Go and check the results in Bauchi. Go and check the results in Jigawa. He scored over 90% in those states under the leadership of the PDP as a federal government. So it was okay for Buhari to score over 90% in his own core constituency, but something utterly went wrong when Obi did it in the Southeast. This ethnic group have always been part of a nationalist political party and never really have ever built a regional movement. All the times they have supported a political party have been national political parties right from the NCNC. Yeah, sure. They have a stakeholder in the PDP. They don't have the regional party in the sense that we had ACN in the in 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 in, in the southwest. In the sense that they had AMPP in the north. They did not have the the, the behemoth of a regional political party. So where is all this hate coming from? Where is all this hate coming from? They tell you now, for instance, that they have a rabid mob who are harassing people on the internet because their candidate lost. We have very short memories. In 2011, a candidate lost in this country and over 800 people were massacred in violence in the north. I so know this because I personally saved 11 core members and were hidden in my father's hotel in Kano. What, so what are we saying? 800 people were massacred because of the ambition of somebody in this country. And suddenly we are losing our minds because we are saying people are, uh, are, 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 are insulting you online and they are so they are a rabid mob. Let us stop this. Let us stop this ethnic dog whistling. Let us stop this ethnic baiting. And this thing should not continue. We are one people, one country. All the submissions of this man is the truth and nothing but the truth. The question now remains, will our people hear and learn? Because from the last election, we continue to tell them, don't go out and vote. Your vote does not count. It is not in this system where your vote counts. Your vote does not count. Come and put hands together with the Biafra government to ensure that, you know, you liberate yourself from this place. Ensure that you have your own country. They kept, they, 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 they developed deaf, deaf ears towards it. And they fought Simon Epa, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, until he decided uh, he will not give up and then let them do whatever they want to do.
and they have seen the outcome they have seen the outcome now i remember when i was in the north during the time uh, Buhari was doing campaign I think it was against Jonathan he was doing campaign that time the people who were shouting say Baba say Baba say Baba they were moving with uh, 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 shotguns they were moving with you know chaka boom chaka boom chaka boom and they fired some people in fact they buy the fire that one 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 person in uh, uh, front of my business area and we had to you know rush that woman to the hospital and save that life many persons were fired on that day he came to the north to do campaign just campaign just campaign and we continue to tell you these are the things these people use force use every manner of you know uh, uh, things that are not acceptable by the law for this program they use it they cheat you they use the 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 the, 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 the electoral umpire they use whatever it is within their powers to ensure that they win over and then you sit back and you do nothing and you expect the thing to just come to you on a platter see how see how Obi was used by 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 most of these uh Yoruba pastors this uh, afonja afonja pastors this uh opasanjo and the rest we continue to tell this man stop this thing you are diverting the attention of the piafra movement you are trying to break the attention he didn't know the question now is are they going to listen now will they open their eyes to see that their only saving grace is biafra are they going to open of course you see they are eating crumbs without even knowing that they are eating crumbs and they feel the crumbs they are eating is better off they feel the crumbs they are eating is better off may juku kiabiyama open the eyes of these people to see reality for what it is and to understand that Biafra is their only saving grace. Kachuku Mezuku Biafra first.